listening to another episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast series brought to you by our gold sponsor, AMP. AMP innovates your aesthetic practice. We also want to thank our silver sponsors, Eilise Works and Pronox. Today we are going to be speaking with one of the finest experts in aesthetics. Our host, Jeffrey Richmond, is an award-winning 20-year veteran of the aesthetic industry whose passion led him to co-found the Business of Aesthetics community. Over to you, Jeff. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Business of Aesthetics. Uh, we're doing a live session this morning with Dr. Tiana Tsitsi. We're really excited to have Tiana. Um, I actually got a note from a number of physicians and members of BOA saying that they loved you and they can't wait to hear from you. So, Oh, good. Oh, that's nice. Um, I think uh, being social at all the meetings that you go to and stuff has probably added to your, uh, to, well, just knowing you, being in the room with you. Um, I love being social. You know that. <laughs> I do. I think you and I uh, met probably more than a decade ago now. Well, just about, yeah, right when we opened our practice. Eight years. I was going to say, so when, when yep. was it that you opened your practice? 2014. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You were the very, one of the very first people that we met with through uh, West Coast Laser. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, that's been quite a journey. And I remember you opened up, you know, north of Seattle and I uh, was driving up there from Seattle and thinking, geez, I'm kind of going out into the hinterlands a little bit. That's what uh, my mom says. She says we're in the country, but it, you know. it almost feels that yeah. way. But then everything's grown up so much in, in between. Yeah as well as your practice and the population that it serves. Yes, yes, we have grown tremendously. We have over 8,000 patients now in eight years. Amazing. So mm -hmm. can you share with us uh, before, I know today we really want to talk about your story with the, the Agnes and the Scarlet, their technologies that I've really been interested in, especially, uh, you know, Agnes, I was interested in initially because it's just so different than other things that are on the market. But but before we jump into that, for those people that may not know you as well, can you share your story a little bit, how you opened up, how you chose that area and, and the growth of your practice? Absolutely. So I am an internal medicine doctor. So I had been doing that for about 15 years. And then I got this, um, basically a letter in the mail. It said, come to see what lasers can do for the skin. And it was a seminar and I'd never been to seminars before. And I don't know, for some reason, I thought I'm going to go to this one. Lasers sound awfully cool. I love doing dermatology things in my outpatient practice. So I went and I found that I absolutely loved lasers. So I went to my boss and I said, can you buy me a laser? <laughs> and he's, you know, it's kind of asking somebody, can you buy me a house? And he was like, oh, no, I don't think so. So I just kind of put it on the back burner. I ended up changing jobs and I became board certified in hospice. And I started working down at a hospital in Everett, which is about 30 minutes south of us. And I met an emergency room doctor who had a skin clinic. And the most important thing to that was that he had three lasers. And I was like, oh my gosh, you didn't have to have anybody buy you this laser. He's like, oh no, absolutely not. I have this office. It was down in Seattle. He's like, come see. So I went down to his office, I spent a day with him and I knew, I'm like, I have got to do this. So he told me where he went and got trained. So I went and got trained. And every time I came home from training, my husband was like, you look happier than you've ever been. <laughs> so we've got to try this. So we found a little space, uh, about a thousand square feet in the similar, like the town next to where I had a very large outpatient practice. And I figured all my patients would come to me because, you know, I had been their doctor for 15 years. Um, so we figured we had a good, you know, base of patients. And I knew all the doctors and all the nurses in the area because uh, I'd been there for so long. So I'm like, okay, we've got a patient base. Absolutely. So my husband was in the front, you know, doing reception and I was in the back doing some Botox and fillers and we got ourselves a laser and we thought that was going to be it. And, uh, and then my husband's like, you know what? And I was still working 18 shifts at the hospital in Everett because I was like, I'm never giving this up. This is what I'm going to do forever and I can do it all. And so I was working 18 shifts in Everett and I was working five shifts doing our office. And he's like, you know what? Either you need to jump in all for it or don't. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I can do it all. And he goes, okay, do me a favor. Just take off one month, take one month off of traditional medicine. See what you think. 
So I'm like, fine, but I'm going back. Right. And so now, you know, it's been eight years. <laughs> like, okay, that one month has turned into eight years. Um, and that's what I found that you, you have to do. You have to jump. And so we jumped and then he thought, you know what, people want to see a female in the front. Um, so we hired our first master esthetician. And then we now have 26 people that work for us. And we have two locations. And like I said, over 8,000 patients and growing every day. We had our best year ever. We had our best month ever last month. And uh, it just, I don't know, the sky's the limit, I guess. Yeah, yeah you think the sky is the limit. It's, uh, yeah. you know, with internal medicine, it always... Um, it always interests me so much because there's really when you look at the core of internal medicine and anti-aging and the patient population that you're working with and uh it really blends so nicely with aesthetic medicine it, it's surprising to me that more internal medicine doctors don't integrate aesthetics into their practice i know and i think they are now um however i think there's a lot of family practice a lot of ent's a lot of obviously plastic surgeons are now getting into the men's pub business too um but i'll tell you if i didn't have my my medical background that i do uh, i think some of these things would be more scary to me but you know i can have somebody that gets vasovagal and i'm like eh, okay i've seen that a thousand times or you know they have questions about their underlying medical conditions and does this you know can we do you know, aesthetic things with this kind of background. And yeah, so I think that if I didn't have that, I may, I would be at a disadvantage. So I definitely feel that that has been a huge help. And I thought by putting, you know, MD in, in our name, Rejuvenation MD, that would really drive patients to us because there's a lot of practices out there that don't have MDs on site which is um, not really legal out here, but <laughs> besides the point, um, I think I thought that a lot of people would be driven to us because we do have doctors uh, that are doing the procedures. And now, of course, we've expanded so much. We've got nurse practitioner. We've got a nurse. We've got three female physicians. I mean, all the providers are females, which is great. Um, but I think that it, there is an advantage to, to being an MD that's doing the procedures as well as managing um, and directing the office. Yeah, and I would think even in the evolution of... <clears throat> treating patients and procedures, having so many years of injectable experience really lends itself to feeling comfortable, say, with an Agnes when you first get it. And Oh, sure. Yeah. Those, um, I mean, these, these machines are amazing, uh, but they're also scary because you can do, I mean, all of these machines are amazing and scary. You can really hurt somebody if you do are doing uh, laser treatment and you don't know what you're doing. So it, the same thing with uh, Agnes and Scarlet. I mean, Agnes, you can get rid of fat and it's permanent, but if you don't know what you're doing, you can, you can really, you know, kind of mishmash people. We don't want to mishmash anybody. <laughs> so we do all the training that we can, um, for the treatments that we do. Um, and I think it shows in the fact, I mean, I know we're, we're talking about Agnes and Scarlet, but out of, out of, um, the entire country, we are, the, in the top 1% with how much Botox and filler we do. We're in the top 1% with how many halos we do. I anticipate that we're in the top, if we're not top 1% with how much scarlet and fatness that we do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we just, we try to excel by knowing, by knowing how to use our equipment and then using it to the maximum extent. So. And I, I mean, remember, I guess it was in 2014, but I, I was speaking with you and your husband and I said, so what's like your long-term goal in terms of equipment and procedures? And I think the, the idea was I would love to have something to treat everyone for everything. Yeah, I probably you know? said that. Um, Absolutely. And we do. I mean, we rejuvenate vaginas now. Come on. I mean, for lifting breasts. But um, but these all but Agnes and Scarlet, I mean, they can fit into every single procedure that we do. If we're going to do filler and give volume, I'd like to tighten by doing Scarlet. If we're going to do tear trough filler, first, I want to get rid of the bags with Agnes and then I want to fill. So, I mean, they go with everything. Again, we can rejuvenate vaginas. Right. And we can we can go on the inside, but now I can use scarlet on the outside to tighten the labia. I mean, it's it's never ending. I'm using Agnes on somebody's uh, labia minora because she had genital mutilation in Africa. And I'm using Agnes to help with that uh, deformity that's there. 
So, I mean, it can integrate with our breast lift. We're using scarlet to lift the breasts. People have tummy tucks. We're using scarlet to help their scars. So, I mean, it can integrate into everything of aesthetics. They're amazing. What do you do when that, uh, I'm off topic a little bit, but I'm interested. So when you're trying something new Mm -hmm. with one of these devices, obviously you have a track record of seeing results and you have some experience with the tissue, but when you're really trying something new, what do you how do you approach that with the patient? You, you, I mean, it's, hey, I've been using these devices for a while and let's give it a yeah. try. I think it's going to work. Um, well, you know, I always say I, you have to just be confident in what you know, right? So I, I usually am just saying, this is going to work. This is going to work. So why it doesn't make sense that it wouldn't work. And I wouldn't try it if I didn't think that it was not going to work. And if you, what my husband says is if you've done it once, you've done it a thousand times. <laughs> so we just need to do it once. So a lot of times we'll try something on, you know, maybe ourselves or a staff member and we go, oh yeah, that that's, that's great. I, I know it could work. And then, you know, you can kind of transfer what you, the knowledge that you have from it doing something here to something else. Forget what somebody wanted me to do with Scarlett. They just yesterday, she wanted me to try, she, you know, and usually the patients will say, can you use this on blah, blah, blah? Well, she, oh no, let's try it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, a lot of times patients will come to us and if it makes sense, yeah, then it'll make sense. I think it was an earlobe. I think she has earlobe holes. And she's like, do you think that we could, we could try to shrink yeah. those? And, you know, and so we'll still charge them, but if it's like a first time type of thing and we're like, well, I don't know, you want to try it? Yeah, I want to try it. Okay, well, let's do it for, you know, you come up with some kind of cheaper cost because you're the first time person and definitely going to video it. <laughs> so we could put it out there and go, yeah, we, we were the first to try it and look at this. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one right there. I would think just given how well CO2 works and then the design of Scarlet, I would think that it would work. Yeah. I mean, and that's how the whole thing of how the O shot and the P shot worked it started. I mean, you got Runnels doing a doing a facial, a, a vampire facial on some, on his girlfriend. And then she's like, how about I, you inject me in my nether regions? And he's like, oh, let's try it. You know, and now we got those shots. So <laughs> that's how progress makes, progress happens, right? right, you, right. Use the knowledge that you have and you know what the, your machines can do or your treatments can do. And you try to apply it in different ways. I mean, timely, right? We have all sorts of medications that we've used for HIV and things like that. And now we're trying to use it for COVID. So, you know, there's, there's lots of different ways that you can repurpose things um, to help it with advances in other things. So I think, I mean, that's the whole way that this aesthetic industry is going. It's uh, how can we use what we know and how can we make it better? So, um, you know, I don't well, know. That, I think- and technology back to that, I mean, it's similar too, right? I mean, you've always been expanding and bringing on new things as you think that they do something better so i'm curious kind of how many different laser systems you had or you know what you were doing and then when you made that decision did you bring in scarlet and agnes both at the same time and we and, absolutely did well why, our why i guess yeah so we uh we're a cyton family we have a lot of cyton uh, we have Halo, we have Diva, we have BBL, we have all the Cyton toys. Um, and really we were looking for, you know, how can we combine things to make skin tightening better? So we we're looking for a better skin tightening machine, honestly. And um, I mean, although Cyton is wonderful and you combine skin tight with, with microneedling, you get a better result. So then we go, oh, well, how about, how about coupling skin tight with microneedling and radio frequency? So we had a really wonderful rep who kept showing up and he kept saying, Hey, look, I need you to try this. I want you to try this. Please try this. And so we did. And so we tried Scarlet and I'll tell you what, we tried about 12 other microneedling and radio frequency devices. It took us two years to figure out which device we wanted. Now, granted there's the middle of COVID and things like that, that slowed us down for a minute, but we, we, demoed them all and we would bring in different patients to do demos with us um and you know we would get their feedback you know the day later a week later a month later and the feedback from everybody with scarlet was 
wow, that one treatment really worked. With the others, it was, I'm never coming back and doing that again. That really hurt. Now I'm left with stamping. I mean, there are all sorts of different things, but the Scarlet people were all like, wow. I mean, at first we didn't believe it because it was, you know, day one and we did, I think it was the staff we did the first day and, and we're walking around and we all look normal. We're like, how did, did you just do your face? Like, yeah. I mean, we did an Agnes and a Scarlet on the first day and we're like, did you really just do that? Cause you don't look like you did anything. So then we were doubtful. We're like, oh, it doesn't look like much. I mean, there's no downtime with this. So I don't know that we can trust it. And then you go, wait a minute, in a week, in two weeks, in a month, we're like, holy mackerel, look, we haven't done anything else to ourselves. We've just done Scarlet and Agnes. Look at that huge improvement from just one treatment. And so then we, we made the rep come back. I think we demoed it three times. <laughs> It's like, we don't know, how could this be? And every single time the patients and the results just spoke for themselves, just with a single treatment on different people. And I had the same similar, maybe I've had one patient that did like multiple different um, microneedling radio frequency devices. And she's like, hands down, Scarlet. She's like, if you don't get that one, I'm not doing whichever one you buy. <laughs> so, uh, and I think the staff would have uh, would have had a uh, uproar if we didn't get Scarlet and Agnes because they're like, that's the one we saw the best of. And I'm like, but there's this other company and they're willing to give us this microneedling radio frequency device for free, like free, it's free. Like they just want to give it to us. Let's get that one. They're like, nope, we're not going to sell it. I'm like, all right, you're right. We need to go for results. <laughs> so that's when we bought, um, we bought them together because we try them out together. We know what complements they bring together. I think if you're doing scarlet and you're getting the tightening, that's great. But if you have fat that's pulling down, that's not preventing all of the tightening from happening, then you're not going to get the best results. And that's what we're, well, that's what we want to do. We want to give people the best results. So that's why we bought them both together. And honestly, within the first month or two months, um, that machine, those machines were booked out. So we bought a second pair. <laughs> so we couldn't, we couldn't keep up with how much demand there was and how much people were loving it. Was so, that your existing patient population that you now marketed these new procedures to? Yep. Yep. It was all of our existing patients. You know, they were, they would come in for, I don't know, cool sculpting. We'd be like, okay, well, you've done that. Now we have a little bit of laxity. Let's treat that. Or maybe this isn't a good cool sculpting area. Let's do, um, let's, let's use Scarlet to tighten. And so, so we did, yeah, we used a lot of internal marketing and now we've um, externally marketed it obviously as well, but, uh, but just in the first two months, I mean, I think we paid off our, our machines just with, just within that period of time. And then we paid off all four machines within the first four months. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. Wow. And so that, now everybody wants more machines. <laughs> so I, I think I need to big, a, make a bigger space just for yeah, Agnes Scarlet. Location number three, maybe. Yeah, the look, just, well, just the wing for the location, just the wing for the uh, Scarlet Agnes wing. So we have yeah. our laser wing, we have our injectable wing. I think we need our uh, Agnes Scarlet wing because it's just, it's gangbusters. People love them. Do you, so I'm curious, you, you have this practice with all these procedural offerings, you bring in these two new devices from a marketing standpoint, what is it that you were marketing that now you're able to do that you weren't able to do before? And I know some of the things like skin tightening, you were still marketing for maybe not as heavily because skin tight has its right, like uh, abilities and it has yes. its core competencies. But, but I mean, is all of a sudden now you're, you saying, Hey, we're doing small area fat, like what's bringing the patient in wrinkly, crepey skin. What's bringing the, what was bringing the patient? I think what's bringing the patient is mostly the body treatments with Scarlet. Cause a lot of people don't like above their knees or with their arms and things in their neck. And so I think Scarlet does a great job with tightening these areas that people never thought that they could get tight. So you don't need to do a lower body lift. You need to do a lower body Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, so we, we marketed, I mean, we've marketed, I guess we've marketed in all sorts of different ways, um, but lifting and tightening is, is what has really sold it because people come in, they go, I want this, you know, I want to pull back and I go, okay, well, we have a few things. I think let's start with maybe some volume and then let's start, let's do maybe threads. And then we're going to do the cream of the crop with Scarlet, or maybe we start with Scarlet and then we do you know, the filler and then the threads, whichever order we choose, or they want to go in how quickly they want their results. But the fact that it can give longer term results um, and they can get that 
lifting and tightening that they want uh, without undergoing the knife. That's huge. Yeah, it, and it's really like that's probably almost every patient that had come every through patient. before, right? Yeah. It's like the technology is finally grown into our expectation or you know finally we can actually produce some of the the outcomes that we've been looking to produce for a long time well and i really hate sending people um to a surgeon if they don't if they really don't want to and i would you know in terms of bags under the eyes that's really why we got agnes is because we wanted to treat the lower eye bags without having to send our patients away. And we really didn't have anything to do that with. We have plasma pen, which helps a little bit, but nothing like Agnes and killing the fat pads under the eyes. And so that was a huge reason of why I wanted to bring on Agnes. But now what we see is with, with buckle fat, nobody likes your jowls either. So there's a lot more people with jowls than with eye bags. So what we brought on for one reason, um, we're now doing it for other reasons. And now we're learning different ways to use Agnes along with Scarlet. I mean, they both have their place, but we aren't selling them separate. They have to be together because are, they are. are, are you, you can do Scarlet without Agnes, but you're not going to do yeah. Agnes, Agnes without. without yes. Scarlet. Yes. That's what I, yes. Yeah. Right. We sell them together. That, and for me too, I mean, that the thing that attracted me to the units in, in the modalities to begin with was just what you said, the, the fat uh, pad under the eye, because there was just right. nothing else we can do. And nobody wants to inject under there anyway. I mean, we've been for the longest time, we've been talking about injecting in the tear trough and tinea and all yeah. these, right? I, right. And, you know, I know, I know from different places I've been that a lot of plastic surgeons are bringing on Agnes because they don't even want to do the lower plebs. Like if we can get away with doing something that's not as invasive, fantastic. So yeah. there's a lot of plastic surgeons that are buying up these machines because they see the market. I think it's 90% um, of cosmetic patients are, do not undergo surgery. 90%. So what are they doing? Yeah. I mean, they're doing this state of the art technology like Agnes and Scarlet and Halo and Deep and all of these things because nobody wants the downtime and you don't have to do it anymore. Not that you had to do it. I mean, it's a want, right? It's not a need, but yeah, yeah. if you, if you want to get rid of your eye bags, you don't have to undergo surgery anymore. Are you doing, uh, I know with, um, with the Erbium resurfacing, are you doing Scarlet and Erbium? Well, uh, not exactly the same time, but yes. So we'll do the Erbium to help with pigmentation to lighten and brighten. And then we want to tighten with Scarlet. Mm -hmm. It seems like yeah. any type of any of the resurfacing type lasers and Scarlet may work well. Scarlet is going deeper sure. theoretically than the, the resurfacing laser. Yep. Yep. But it, and, you know, you can get pigment with Scarlet if you apply some hydroquinone and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you can use your other technology to help this technology. So if you're like the patient's like, I just want to do Scarlet, but I really hate these brown spots. You're, okay. Let me throw some hydroquinone on there and then let's Scarlet. Or if they want to do some PRP, we can do, um, we can throw some PRP on top of Scarlet as soon as we're done. So there's a lot of ways that you can combine things. And I love combining things. I think that, you know, it's sort of like making the cake. You want to make the cake, then you want to ice the cake, and then you want to do the writing on the icing of the cake. Same thing with these things. Maybe you start with Scarlet, then maybe you, you know, ice the cake with doing some volume, and then maybe you write the icing, write on the icing with doing PDO threads. So there's a whole bunch of, you know, ways you can combine things. Um, and I think combining Erbium, with Scarlet, combining Scarlet, you can even throw Sculpture on top, or you can, which I'm not a huge fan of, I'd rather, rather throw PRP on top, because I think that that's uh, a better use of our stuff. Um, but uh, I think you can, you can combine all sorts of things. And yeah, no, and it sounds you like you are. I'm wondering from a, you know, this is the business of aesthetics. So I'm wondering from a pricing standpoint, are you looking at patients and just saying, look, that's $3,000 worth of treatment and I'm just going to treat that way. Are you piecemealing this stuff? Like you have a menu of services or are you just kind of coming up with a, because it sounds like you're. We, yeah. yeah, we base our pricing on, um, you know, how long are you going to be in the room? 
how long is the room being used for? You know, and you want to bill out your room $750 to $1,000 an hour, right, per provider. So that's what we're basing it on. So, um, and it depends on who you're seeing. If I'm doing Scarlet, I can give that to one of the estheticians. If I'm Agnesing the eyes, that's going to be provider time. So we will come up with packages for people to say, okay, we're going to do Agnes and six Scarlet. And instead of doing it, you know, six independent Scarlets, it's going to be a package price for the Scarlet. If you do the Agnes, we're going to give you the first Agnes for this much money. We'll give you a second Agnes for 50% off, but you've got to buy these Scarlets, but we're going to give you 20% off of those. So we'll package it all together. And you know what, if you do an, if you do a halo and a, you know, in six months from now, then, you know, you get a discount on that. So we do package it together, but we keep the general rule as whatever, however many hours it's going to take, it needs to be somewhere between that some $15,000 an hour per room. Mm -hmm. Do you, with uh, Agnes, is that something that you're doing multiple times in general, or are you doing? Yes. Yeah. 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 We were starting with just one initially. And then when we first started, just to kind of get our our feet wet, we'd say, okay, we're going to do one. And then you come back and we'll do a free second one. If we don't get the results that we want, you know, it's yeah. not really about the patient. It's about what we want <laughs> for the patient. Um, so we would do a second one on us. And now we're realizing and going to these meetings that people are generally requiring two to three Agnes to get the results that we all want. So now we're doing, you know, you buy Agnes for this price, then you get a second one for 50% off. If you get a third one, you get, you know, that could be 50% off too, but you need to do it all up front. Um, so for, for package pricing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah I am, I, I am thinking, I am seeing that people are generally needing at least two, two Agnes. Again, I'd rather under treat than over treat. You can, I mean, it's a dangerous thing to put Agnes in somebody's hands and say, just go for it. You know, you have got to be very calculated and I'd much rather have them come back and do one on me than have them come back and have a hole in their face. Yeah. So it, 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 and Agnes can do that. So I would right. never right. advocate doing Agnes without having the training. And some people have gotten Agnes and they're sitting in their office and, and they're like, we're afraid to use it. You should be afraid to use it until you get training. We had the trainers come out here to us three times. And, uh, and it was wonderful. Every time a trainer told us, you know, different ways to do things. It's all the practice of medicine, right? So it was just another way to do things, but we were, you know, finessing it. And, um, and again, you, you're much better off under treating and doing something on you than to over treat because you don't know what you're doing and you end up giving somebody a scar or a hole or whatnot. You know, with how many new uses there are and just things you're coming up with and then your peers are coming up with, that's one of the other exciting things with the technology is there yeah. is still a lot of new stuff on the horizon. There's so much unknown right. that we're not using yet. Right. Yeah. When we were just at that uh, user summit in Dallas and, um, you know, we learn things and then we impart things to, to what we've been doing to other people. So it was a great give and take there of, um, you know, I do a lot of PRP breast lifts and I was telling people how I do the scarlet with that. And then there's somebody else that says, oh, well, I'm doing Agnes for acne and this was her protocol and how she did it and how she found it most effective. And then we had you know, I forget, um, one of the, one of the leaders up at the front, you know, he's using it to, to tack the skin back. And it's like, it's like a facelift that way, just by doing it right in front of the ear. And we're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So, but we've been doing it along the jawline this whole time. We didn't think about that. So, you know, I mean, it's great to have everybody kind of knowing what you have in your hand, using it safely, but then going, what can I do with it? And let me keep trying it. I mean, we can tack up the, the eyebrows and do things like that. Or like I said, maybe we can fix, and we have been, uh, fixing areas of genital mutilation or those earlobe, those big old earlobe things that are gauges that are in there. I mean, so it's just going to keep getting better and better as more people buy Agnes and the more people use it. Um, right. And, you know, obviously using it safely, but also going, huh, I wonder if I can tighten that area or I wonder if I can close that hole or... So do you, can we talk about the, the learning for a second? The, yeah. when you, you know, amplify the, the uh, AMP, AMP mm -hmm. has their amplify 
university and I know yeah. they're big on the training. You said you had yes. a trainer come out three times with three different trainers, three different times. And they weren't local. I mean, they flew in from Colorado. Um, one of them is from San Diego. And that was the company's yeah. commitment to you just to get trained. You're just asking, yeah. Hey, I want more help. And they're saying, sure, we'll help you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There was no, there was no question. I might not want to say that because now they might be like, oh gosh, she said everybody can get three trainings, but um, we weren't comfortable. I mean, the eyes were, was the thing we were getting hung up on. And I really don't want to hurt anybody's eyes for sure. I mean, I don't want to hurt anybody anywhere, but I was not comfortable. And I wasn't going to put that machine in the corner because I know that machine is a worker and that right. machine will get us results. We just needed to know how to do it properly. And yeah, they came out and we had, I mean, they came out again, they might kill me, but they came out on the weekends and they were fantastic. They were fantastic. I, I'm, I'm, I don't, I hesitate to close my office for a day for training. So I always, yeah. I typically have my trainings on the weekends, which is wonderful for my staff to know that they would be willing to come in on the weekend to get trained. And they all did. And it was great. And, you know, then we get food and stuff like that. So it's a kind of like a little bonding thing too, but, um, but to have amp go, yeah, we'll be there on the weekend. No problem. Did, is it, was great. it like start with a few things and then get a little bit better about it and then we'll learn even more or was it just a matter of doing more procedures? No, it was really more just hands-on. I mean, they wanted us to be hands-on. They just stood back there and said, okay, this is the way you do it. You know, obviously we, we had gotten, you know, some knowledge before we had the trainer come out, but then the trainer came out and said, okay, this is the way you're going to hold it. This is the way you're going to push here. This is the way you're going to do this. These are the settings you're going to use. Um, and when we had when the first trainer come out and then we did it for like, you know, a month and we're like, oh, you know what, we're now that we got our hands into it without her here, we have all these other questions. And I don't know that's something we can just zoom with and talk to somebody with. So I, I asked, I said, can, can another trainer come? And they're like, absolutely. There was no pushback. They were like, yeah, when do you want them? I'm like, I want them tomorrow. Okay. I think we had them within just even a couple of weeks. Yeah. Because the better we're at it. Yeah. From, from early discussions with their senior management at AMP, I know education was always on their forefront, how they wanted to differentiate themselves from other wonderful from other companies yeah. Yeah. yeah it's great they they have been super supportive um and then you know we got invited to go to the user summit which was great in and of itself we um and then we went over to clear skin which is in arizona so we did that too and that was just another level so i mean i i guess we've probably been trained now five times for one piece of equipment and you know usually they say like the best the easiest way to get rid of a rep is to buy their equipment but that's not true with amp they're just, you know, I, I constantly hear from my rep and he's like, anything you need, let me know, you know, Hey, you want to do a podcast? <laughs> uh, you know, do you want to, you know, and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I'll do, I'll do anything. I, I love this company. I'm glad our first rep was, was super aggressive. I don't want to say he was aggressive. He's just great. Um, I think that he, he, he was persistent. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad he was. Um, because we we may not have have bought it if he wasn't so willing to come over and do so many demos and we weren't able to see the results, you know. But the fact is, they're willing to come in and do demos. We we they gave us lots of times to demo other things just because they knew they were super confident in their technology, and um, and they weren't like you must buy it by today. You know, there was no pushiness, uh, and so that was really nice. Um, and then that gave me time to go, you know what, I've looked at all of the other machines. I, I know that nobody else has the not effect that Scarlet does. I know that nobody has the low downtime that Scarlet does. And I know there's, you know, a couple other machines out there that have a lot of, um, you know, they, they've been out on social media or they've been in the media. And I'm like, you know what, Scarlet's got everything on Morpheus 8. Like, don't bother. Cause I have seen the difference and I have patient, I have somebody down the street that's got that machine and I see her patients all the time. So yeah, saying, you know what? I didn't get the result that I wanted. I'm like, yeah, well, let me tell you why. And let me tell you why Scarlet's better. Yeah. It's really neat. And the, and you're generating hundreds of thousands of dollars. It sounds like, and, and a lot of that, maybe that you're including these modalities with, almost every treatment plan. So it's like Absolutely. they have a place with almost every patient. Yes, they, they do. And really that's the main thing for this business is it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It is, I don't want to see you for Botox and have you never come back. I want to see you looking like I do when you're 50 or you're 60 or you're 70 or you're 80. 
um, I don't, I want you to keep your skin looking fantastic. And so the way to do it is to start early and, and, and do a lot of different things. There's no wrong answer. The only wrong answer is if you're at a, if you're at a cheap place that doesn't care and all they want to do is sell you cheap Botox. Like we don't sell cheap Botox. We fix cheap Botox. We don't sell crappy equipment. We help you improve from whatever you have done before to get better and to get you to your goal. So it's, it's a, it's a journey for us and it's fun to see the patients. I mean, we had a patient the other day who actually had to call us from her hospital bed to tell us that she was going in for surgery and uh, the nurse had come in and she goes, well, I'm looking for Jane. And she goes, well, I'm Jane. And she goes, the nurse is like, no, 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 Jane's 75. And she's like, I'm 75. And she's like, oh, what are you doing? Well, so then of course she, she's like, well, this is where I go. This is what I've done. Da, da, da. And then she goes, okay, well, I'm going to take your makeup off now. And Jane's like, I'm not wearing any makeup. And she's like, okay, that's it. I'm telling all of everybody. So, you know, I mean, when you, when you, that's, and she had to call us like they're wheeling her practically to surgery. And, uh, she had to call us and tell us that experience, which is wonderful. And, uh, and she does look fabulous, but she's done a bunch of different things along the way. It's not a one and done. And people always go, how long is this going to last? Nothing lasts. I mean, you go in for plastic surgery to do a facelift. They don't, they're not going to touch your face with your skin. I mean, they might do a, they might do a laser at the end if, if you ask for that, but you know, they usually don't, you still need to keep, keep your skin looking good. So you still need to do scarlet. So even, even plastic surgery is not forever. So, and, and it's not, it's certainly not forever for the texture and the quality of your skin. It could be 10 years for pulling it back, but you got to keep it looking good um, by continuing to do other things. So no, Scarlet's not forever unless you're doing maintenance. And, and so we always tell people when we include our first maintenance with our, with our correction package, which is, you know, you do it once a month for five months and then you do four times a year. They go, oh, four times a year. I thought this would be forever. Like, no, you have gravity. I mean, do you change your cell phones? Of course you do, because things get, things improve. You, you can't stop. You don't go to the gym for, you know, four hours and then never go back to the gym. Do you? No, you have to keep going to the gym. Right. Nobody blinks an eye about their gym membership. Yeah. I would think that uh, Scarlett's a great way to maintain uh, facelift results. And also if yes. you're, if you're putting off a facelift for yep. a year or something like that, maybe, uh, maybe you do a scarlet before it would only improve the quality of the collagen when the surgeon exactly go do the lift. Yeah. You can do a lot more in surgery if you're starting with a grape than if you're starting with a raisin. That's what yeah. I think. <laughs> so we use, I like to, and one thing we haven't really talked about is scarlet's pretty, um, uh, well, it's great for everything, but it's great for eyelid laxity. So whenever I see people that are coming in, you know, for their Botox to lift their eyebrows, I go, well, yeah, well, let's do that, of course. But do you, do you want to really lift your eyebrows? Because you don't need to wear eye protection with scarlet. So I can go all the way to your lash lines and I can help tighten that and I can help tighten that. And even if you're thinking about a bluff at some point, maybe it's not for five years, it, we can tighten those lids so you can see better. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and those are the results that we're seeing. So um, it's, you know, it's great before surgery. It's great after surgery. It's great without surgery. Yeah. I mean, every patient's patients uh, maybe have realistic expectations not to have surgical results, but they all desire surgical results. And they that's do. even with non-invasive. So the fact that yep. you have technology now that you're able to get close to those yeah. Results with non-invasive technology. I think it's what you said before. It's the, the wave of that future. Yeah. And it's great. And I'm so excited to be in this whole field. It's, I mean, I can't wait to see what we're doing, what we're going to do next. I don't know. I mean, maybe Amp will tell us what we're going to do next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or maybe you'll, you'll tell us what we're doing. Well, maybe. Yes. Once I take over the country and then <laughs> the world, and then remember, cause we're going shooting for the stars here. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad we got to spend some time today. It's really a, a testament to uh, your, you and your practice and your enthusiasm, the yeah. growth that you've had and your ability to keep on bringing new procedures on and continue to bring those to your patients. So you're growing with your patients and they're continuing to come 
see you and I can just yeah. hear your passion when you talk. So oh God, I love it. Well, you know, I mean, you and I are getting older, so we've got to keep this going because <laughs> exactly. I don't want to change. I mean, we want to get older, but because there's no good alternative, but we don't want anybody to know we're getting older. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, we... I'm going to fight it. I'm not going to be super graceful in my fight. <laughs> Me neither. We'll fight it together in the boxing ring together with AMP. There you go. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, on behalf no of the uh, Business of Aesthetics community, we, we really thank you for sharing your story with us today. Mm -hmm. If you have um, questions for Dr. Cece, uh, please jump on the Business of Aesthetics Facebook group. You can ask there. If um, people wanted to reach out to you directly, is there, do you have an Instagram or a good way to do that? Yeah, well, they can just email me. I'm at, um, well, it's a long email, but I guess you could just go to our website at rejuvenationmdmedspa.com and then there's a contact us and those come to me. I mean, not only me, but they'll get to me. But, yeah. or you can go to, you know, dr. drcc at rejuvenationmdmedspa.com. But probably the best way is just to go to the, we are we'll, through we'll Instagram. Post that. We'll post that yeah. for future recordings. Uh, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions. I, I want, I want everybody to be able to offer this fantastic technology to people. And, um, you know, people always wonder about competition and, you know, well, do I really want to tell competitors about this great procedure? Absolutely. We want to tell everybody because we want to get it out to people because it's such a great technology. And the more people, providers that do it, the more patients get exposed to it. And it's, it's I mean, there's plenty of faces out there for everybody. I mean, I want them all, but, you know, I will share, and I think that we just need to get the word out about how fabulous um, people can feel in their own skin using these things that have really little downtime and are really great. They're so great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of the Business of Aesthetics, yeah. I know you have a busy day seeing uh, patients out yep. there. Yes, uh, we, we do. We appreciate you getting up. All of you that jumped on live with us, uh, this will be available afterwards too, so you can share it with your friends. Thank you very much, Dr. Cici. Okay, bye, it. see you again. <laughs> bye. Thank you for joining us this week on the Business of Aesthetics podcast series brought to you by our gold sponsor, Aesthetic Management Partners. AMP innovates your aesthetic practice. And silver sponsors, Eilis Works and Pronox. Would you like to join our growing group of aesthetic industry experts and get featured on the Business of Aesthetics podcast? Or do you know someone who would love to share their strategies for growth in the aesthetic business, providing quality patient care or their clinical expertise? Head on over to businessofaesthetics.org forward slash speakers and apply to be featured as a guest on the show. Remember to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen. If you would like to engage with today's or any of our past speakers, Join our Facebook group or LinkedIn group by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Thank you and have a great day.